A large percentage of heart failure patients suffer from mitral valve regurgitation, also known as leaky valve, but many can't get curative therapy because open heart surgery is not an option for them. But these patients now have another option. Here today to talk to us about this new innovative procedure is structural interventional cardiologist Dr. Saurabh Sanin with Baptist Heart and Vascular Institute. Good morning, Dr. Sanin. Thank you so much for joining us. Rachel, thank you. Nice to be here. Well, it is kind of an interesting topic, but before we get into it, I want to know about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you ended up in Pensacola, and your experience as a structural interventional cardiologist. Sure. So as you know, I'm new to the area, but in many ways, coming back to the South has been sort of a homecoming for me. See, I, it's because we're all such nice people. I love the Southern people, <laughs> no doubt about it. And so I actually started my medical career in Houston, Texas. Great. I was at the Texas Medical Center and worked at the University of Texas in Houston and then in San Antonio. And then Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota hired me and I completed my interventional cardiology training there as well as structural heart disease training. And so when Baptist called me and offered me a position here, I really saw in it a great opportunity to come back down to the South, to a part of the country and really a part of the state where nobody else was offering these cutting edge procedures. And uh, So you're saying that Pensacola is kind of like special in that regard, that we are offering those kinds of... Pensacola is now in the league of uh, big medical centers wow. around the country. Because That's really cool. previously, if a patient had, for example, mitral regurgitation, which we will talk about, or similar problems, they had to either travel to south or central Florida to get these procedures, or travel out of state. Very specialized centers had the technology to do these procedures the way we are doing it now mm -hmm. at Baptist. And so I think, uh, you know, it's been a very rewarding last six months for me here. We are able to help a lot of our community older people, sick people who don't have to travel out, and they can now get the same level of world-class care mm -hmm. here at home that they would otherwise have to travel out for. Well, that's really exciting, and it kind of makes me proud to be a Pensacola native. It's, that all this cool stuff is happening right in our community. Pensacola is a great city. I love the South and the Southern people, and I think it's uh, wonderful that we can add these things to our community here. Cool. Um, so let's get right into it, and I'm, I'm working on my words here. But what is mitral valve regurgitation? It, it kind of sounds, uh, first of all, the word regurgitation kind of freaks me out a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> could you explain uh, what that is? Yeah, so you know, the mitral valve is one of four valves in the heart. And this valve, the mitral valve, is the valve between the left upper and the left lower chambers of the heart. In a normal heart, when the heart beats or contracts, this valve snaps shut tightly, mm -hmm. and there's no leakage of blood. But when a patient develops regurgitation, which is another, it's just a fancy word for leakage, so when a patient develops mitral valve regurgitation or leakage, with the heartbeat, the blood leaks back from the lower chamber to the upper chamber of mm -hmm. the heart. And so a leaky mitral valve is what we're talking about here. Right, AKA leaky valve. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. So what are the most common symptoms of a leaky valve? Most patients that develop this, this pathology, this problem, present with shortness of breath. Oh, well, I get that just walking up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should get evaluated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, don't freak me out. <laughs> well, you know, these are usually older people who sure. have had leakage that progresses over time. And when this leakage becomes severe, most of these patients have very severe shortness of breath. And we're talking about shortness of breath with minimal activity mm -hmm. to the level where your lifestyle is hampered. The patients then develop shortness of breath with swelling in the ankles, are unable to lay flat in the bed at night. These are symptoms of heart failure. And essentially what this leaky mitral valve causes is progressive heart failure. And mm -hmm. that is what the patients sense. And so a lot of the patients that come to me will have all of these symptoms or different symptoms in stages of progression. So you mentioned lying down at night. What, what exactly are the symptoms as it relates to that? Well, well, when heart failure progresses, besides getting short of breath only when a person exerts, the shortness of breath reaches a level where patients are short of breath even at rest. 
Oh, wow. And at night when these patients lay in their beds, mm -hmm. they cannot lay flat because they feel like they're choking. They cannot breathe. That is really scary. And so a lot of patients will start stacking up pillows and raising mm -hmm. their head end of the bed up to be able to breathe comfortably. Obviously a very distressing situation mm -hmm. for patients. Absolutely. And it's a sign of uh, advancing heart failure. Wow. A lot of patients with mitral regurgitation get that. Well, tell us about this new procedure that, that should help the leaky valve. Sure. So it's the procedure is called transcatheter mitral valve repair. What that means is we're repairing the mitral valve using a catheter, just like we do a heart cat, without doing open heart mm -hmm. surgery. And it's a new procedure that the FDA approved in 2013, October 2013. It is available only at a handful of selected sites around the country. It's a very specialized procedure. And in this procedure, essentially, I do this in the cath lab. I go in from the groin. There's a vessel in the groin, the femoral vein. And we go in from the vein into the right side of the heart. And then we have to make a little hole between the wall between the upper two chambers of the heart. That allows us to get into the left side where the leaky valve is. And once we are in the left side, we can bring in what is called a mitra clip. And it is a small clip. It's about the size of a dime. Mm -hmm. It has two arms, kind of like that. And using those arms, I can actually go up and grab the leaky mitral valve leaflets together and snap them shut. Wow. And so it fixes the leakage just like the surgeon would fix the leakage with a stitch after mm -hmm. opening the heart up. Well, it sounds like it's much, much less e invasive than maybe some other heart surgeries are. Would that be accurate? Definitely. Now, most of these patients, before they qualify for this procedure that I offer, have to be turned down by surgery. So these are seen by our surgical colleagues, and they evaluate them for open heart surgery. And if they are found to have too high of a risk mm -hmm. for open heart surgery, they then qualify for transcatheter therapy. So the risk of doing this is much lesser than open heart surgery. Most patients uh, stay in the hospital for two to three days and uh, they're wow. able to go home. That is a especially quick recovery for a heart. Very quick recovery. A lot of uh, patients wow. uh, feel drastic improvement in symptoms very fast and they don't need any special medical therapy afterwards wow. for the clip itself. All they need is a baby aspirin. Oh, uh, wow. So you don't need to thin the blood out or <laughs> do anything incredible. fancy. Yeah. So you kind of touched on this a little bit, but I wanted to clarify again, why is this treatment better than other heart treatments? Well, you, if you really think about it, for the patients that qualify for it, this is the only treatment. Because these are patients who have been evaluated by cardiac surgeons, and they're not candidates for open heart mm -hmm. surgery because they're very high in their operative risk. So their options are then to just treat the leakage medically, which is not an optimal answer because there's a mechanical problem with mm -hmm. the valve, so the solution has to be mechanical. So the options then become to just treat medically or perform transcatheter mitral valve repair. So in many cases, this is the only option for these uh, very sick patients. Well, if some of our viewers may feel like they're a candidate for this or, or maybe want more information, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can call my office, uh, ebaptisthealthcare.org is the website. Right. And, uh, I, and think I think the number will be the on the screen. The number will be on the screen. They can call the office and ask for an appointment with me. Awesome. Well, this is great information, and I, I hate that we have to wrap it up because I'm sure there's a lot more you could share. But thank you again for joining us. I know this is going to impact a lot of people. Thank really you, Rachel, appreciate for it. having me. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you.